Thank you for coming. My name is Miwa Lee. I'm with the Korean Resource Center. So on behalf of the center, I'd like to welcome you for joining us. Thank you for joining us at this uh, joint press conference. <laughs> we are here today uh, to join other concerned Korean American organizations to speak out against the an recent anti-Korean rhetoric expressed by co-host John Cobalt, I hope that's the right pronunciation, of KFI 640 during the January 5th broadcast of the Clear Channel's John and Ken show. I want to preface uh, what we're about to talk about today by saying this is not just a mere uh, disgruntled um, hurt feelings. This is, serious, this is a serious problem. Hateful rhetoric, racist stereotypes leads to a climate of hate and prejudice. That in turn leads to hate crimes. FBI has uh, done studies on this. They keep, I, I mean, both of you know that they keep crime statistics. Two thirds of all hate crime is based on ethnicity, ethnicity bias, if you will. So this is a serious issue that we do need to address. Um, we're, I'm going to be introducing five speakers who will be talking about it um, in greater in depth. The uh, first speaker is Mr. Uh, Jorge Mario Cabrera. Um, you have the press kit, everybody, and so you probably have some information in there as well. You don't. I'm not sure if all the list of the speakers are in there. If you need um, their names and, and affiliations, let me know. So the first speaker, uh, Mr. Cabrera, is going to talk about. Uh, he's with. I'm sorry, Director of Communications with Charla Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles. Um, and then after will be uh, next week, Morna Ha, Executive Director of NACASEC, National Korean American Service and Education. Education Consortium. Then Jane, I'm sorry, Jane? Yeah, Jane Oak, president of CABA, Korean American Bar Association. Chan Heng Lee, Lee, executive director of KIWA, Koreatown Immigrant Workers Alliance. Then last but not least, Yunsun Park, she's attorney with APAL, Asian Pacific American Legal Center. All right? So Mr. Cabrera, he has to leave soon, so he's going to go first. Thank you, everyone, and my apologies. I do have to leave um, right at 11, since we have another event coming up. My name is Jorge Mario Cabrera. I'm the Director of Communications for CHIRLA, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles. One of the great beauties of living in the United States is the fact that we have freedoms. And one of those freedoms is the freedom of speech. However, and, the freedom, and the, the freedom of expression, of course. However, when someone like John and Ken, who have at least two million listeners every day, listening to their trash, to their hate uh, mongering, to their divisive rhetoric, then their freedom of speech must be questioned. Because their freedom of speech intercedes with my freedom of speech. Recently, John and Ken gave out my cell number, my personal cell number, and my office, cell, uh, my office phone number. I received 517 hate calls within a period of two weeks. You can imagine receiving calls at 2 a.m. in the morning, 7 a.m. in the morning, 1 p.m. right after you're, you're having lunch or while you're having lunch with people calling you everything from traitor, trash, pig, fat pig, you know, I, I don't mind the pig part, but I do mind, you know, the fat part, but anything in between. And the only reason why John and Ken gave out my number and Chirla's number is because we were in favor of the DREAM Act, the California DREAM Act. And as you know, the California Dream Act supports undocumented college students to receive certain uh, financial support. For 20 years, John and Ken have benefited and have trafficked in hate. And I am glad that the Korean community, the Latino community, and other communities, including Jewish and African Americans, are standing up to John and Ken because finally, what we're saying is, Angelinos will allow you to have freedom of speech, but we will not allow you to hurt us, 
We will not allow you to pigeonhole us. We will not allow you to divide us. And we ask Angelinos to say to John and Ken, enough. Your welcome is no longer welcome. You have overstayed your welcome. There you go. That's probably a better way to say it. You have overstayed your welcome, and we don't want you in L.A. So a campaign has started. About 40 organizations have joined together to do this campaign against the John and Ken Show. 16 sponsors have left the John and Ken Show, and that includes anywhere from Buick, Chevrolet, you name it. A lot of companies, Home Depot, AT&T, AT that was the first one actually, AT&T, to leave. But more is needed, because obviously they need to get the message from all of us. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Uh, I'm actually going to say some few words in Spanish, and I see a few colleagues in Spanish here. Desde hace 20 años, el programa de John and Ken ha estado produciendo palabras de odio. Y aquí estamos ahora para decirle a John y Ken que la ciudad de Los Ángeles no va a permitir que continúe este tipo de retórica divisiva. En Los Ángeles queremos decirle a John y Ken que ya no los queremos, que ya no somos John y Ken. Gracias. Okay. Our next speaker, Morna Hall, Good morning, my name is Marna Ha, and I'm with Natchez Act, the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium. We are a national network of Korean American groups uh, with local affiliates here in Los Angeles, the Korean Resource Center, and also in Chicago, the Korean American Resource and Cultural Center. And we are here today to stand with other Korean American organizations in Southern California to condemn the racist and inflammatory remarks made by the Gen Gen John and Ken hosts. We're here to stand together um, against the perpetration, perpetration of hateful speech and stereotypes. These remarks took a swipe at hardworking families who have done nothing but contribute to the economic and cultural fabric of California and to this nation. These shows, and John and Ken have posited that their speech is stimulating and that they reflect the community of uh, their listeners. But really, there's nothing stimulating about hate speech. And there's nothing stimulating about um, continuing stereotypes. And they've done nothing but to contribute to the uh, creation of a toxic environment. The media has a responsibility to foster understanding and to create bridges and mean uh, dialogues between communities. John and Ken and their history of scapegoating immigrants, African Americans, Latinos, and the Asian American community have only served to divide our, to divide our communities. We as consumers, immigrants, and community members, and Californians are not willing to tolerate this hateful speech in the media. And we look forward, NACASAC and its partners and its allies look forward to working with others to continue to monitor and put pressure on the John and Ken Show and on KFI Radio until this hateful rhetoric is put to an end. Thank you. Our next speaker, Chan O, President of CABA. Good morning. My name is Jane Oak. I am the president of the Korean American Bar Association of Southern California. Uh, I, our organization, along with Nagasek and Chirla and all KRC and many, many other organizations, are coming together to make a statement against uh, KFI and the John and Ken Show. Like the others have spoken, um, these kind of statements, although they might be fun and just, they actually do incite possibly. Um, angered feelings against Korean American business owners. Um, they could actually hurt business, and so the, the consequences are, it goes on and on and on, and we need to make a statement. Kaba um, has put together a letter, and the letter is in your package. This letter is going to be sent out to um, the program director at KFI, and there are joined, there's a joinder page, and we are hoping to get as many organizations to sign on the joinder page so that when we send it over to them it will be stacked with many many signatures of other organizations that stand with Korean American Bar Association and all these other organizations and try to help put an end to these insightful racist comments about any minority group um, it's not just the Korean Americans it's the Latino Americans and it, it goes on and on and on so um, really encourage you to spread the word and get people to come out and uh, 
we appreciate all the support and um, we hope that this will actually produce results this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chang uh, Executive Director of Cuba. I am not an executive director, I am a committee coordinator of the Department of the Alliance. Uh, the journey can show reminds me of one African American, one famous African American lab singer, Isaac Cube's Black Korea, which was released in the late 1991. As you may know, uh, the lab the from the, uh, the, the Black Korea. Uh, Around a lot of resentment of the Korean Americans because it had very violent and racist remarks against Korean Americans. Of course, the storm was not a main cause of the Los Angeles riots of 1992, but we can say that uh, it contributed to an exacerbation uh, of race relations in Los Angeles, especially between African Americans and Korean Americans. And so, going back to the John and Ken show. Uh, I think public figures such as John McCann, uh, their irresponsible remarks could bring about an unexpected result to minor communities. And also, their irresponsible remarks denies the fact that Los Angeles economy has been sustained by an expropriation of immigrant workers, including undocumented workers. And there also, um, I remember John N. Ken said at the KTL radio show, which was aired a few weeks ago, that uh, like every American, they can say anything because they have the freedom of speech per se, which was guaranteed by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. That's right. They have the freedom of speech. But what they are advocating is not the freedom of speech per se, but the, but the freedom of hate speech. But you know what? The US, the U.S. Constitution has not only the First Amendment, but also has the 14th Amendment, which requires the U.S. Constitution dismantle any kind of racist remarks, any kind of racist ideologies. So we can say that John and Ken, they are <coughs> the U.S. Constitution, to destroy the U.S. Constitution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Young-Sun Park, attorney with APAC. Good morning, everyone. My name is Young-Sun Park. I'm a senior staff attorney with the Asian Pacific American Legal Center. APAC, uh, which is a member of the Asian American Center for Advancing Justice, is one of the largest civil rights organizations in the country serving the Asian American and other immigrant communities. Uh, we're here today to speak out against the John and Ken Show, which has targeted minority groups, including the Korean American community, as well as other immigrants' rights leaders and organizers. As an organization dedicated to combating injustice and hate against Asian and other immigrant communities, APOC is here to stand in solidarity and in support of these organizations, the Korean Resource Center, as well as Coalition for Humane Immigrants' Rights of Los Angeles, and their members and supporters, and we demand that the <coughs> Channel and KFI AM pull this show from the air. In Southern California, which is home to the largest Korean American population, and the largest Korean population outside of Korea, there is no room for this kind of hateful and divisive rhetoric which can only incite violence. Uh, we also ask that the show's remaining advertisers, which we understand to include Chevron, Hyundai, North America, and Target, to stop supporting the Ken and John show and to remove their advertising support. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I want to um, end, well, do we have time for a quick, or is DJ, do we have time for a quick um, question session, real quick, if there are any outstanding questions? No? Okay. Uh, we wanted to announce a protest rally that we'll be holding on Thursday at noon, this Thursday at noon, in front of the KFI station. In your press kit, 
Um, you, you received a capital letter. There's an address of KFI. <coughs> and so please just make note that that's where our next <laughs> our next step is going to be at is the protest rally. Um, I, think, I think that ends about it. DJ, where are you? Oh, do we, is there anything else that I want to add? You guys should have open up a question. I, I did. Someone has any questions? Okay, so you guys such a good job. <laughs> okay, but this is Joe from the Korea Times. I have a question that if you guys have any plan to proceed, proceed and uh, legal steps like a filing a lawsuit or something. That would be with ATOC and Kyra. Um, if we were to do that, probably they would take point. The question is would we be taking any legal measures at this point? From um, Kaba's perspective, no, we are not going to. Uh, at this point, we see that the pressure, the social pressure, as well as the advertisement pressure, is going to better accomplish that goal. Our understanding is that there are legal gray areas in terms of uh, uh, pressing, uh, you know, pressing forward legally. Uh, we love freedom. Just as much as any other American, and we respect it. Um, we we would, um, you know, we would sacrifice much for it. But adding to a kind of hate and prejudice, and especially at a time like this one, with the down economy, people are stressed out. And they're feeling depressed. Add to that, you're basically adding fuel to fire. Even if it's a minor thing like graffiti done out of hate, that still destroys property. It costs dollars. Billions of dollars go into to hate crime related or hate related um, uh, behavior. What they're doing under the, the guise of freedom of speech is wrong. It's just wrong. And it's not just the Korean American community or the Latin American community or the African American community pouting with, with um, myth because they hurt our feelings. This is serious. This is serious. And we've got to stand together to make a stand and say, stop. Stop. You're, you're, you're making the situation worse. I'm sorry for that long answer, but <laughs> any other questions? Uh, what if they don't listen to? Do you have a order to stick on? What if uh, they don't listen to? Oh, first we're going to start with a protest rally, and um, we're going to be targeting um, more or less sponsors uh, of the show. As um, Ms. Oaks just said, we have the power of the media, we have the power of the people. Our voice combined together can be an awesome thing, and we're going to use that to apply pressure. Basically, make it hurt where the wallet is. If, if I may add also, when we started the campaign in the Latino community, many Latinos said, but we don't even listen to them. Why should we care? <laughs> well, we care because remember, when Lou Dobbs was on CNN, many Spanish-speaking Latinos also, or non-English speakers, Maybe they not watch uh, Lou Dobbs on CNN, but what he said had national implications in the politics, policies, and <coughs> attitudes of people all over the United States. So it took two years to get Lou Dobbs off the air. And it was members of the same coalition that we're part of today that are working to get John and Ken off the air. Obviously, it's not going to happen quickly, but when we react and when we express our disappointment, our disillusion, and our anger with KFI and Clear Channel, then we are standing up for ourselves, and I believe that that's terribly important, because otherwise they will continue to do it all the same. Right. Thank you. Very well put. Thank you. So there's precedence. We have gotten the talk shows off the air, so or chillated, so we're going to work towards getting Ken and uh, John and Ken show off. I believe their um, listenership is quite wide too. It's it's one of the most popularly listened to um, across the nation in terms of paid talk shows. So this is a very important job. We take it quite seriously. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Has John and Ken show responded to your efforts? <laughs> as far as we know. No, but chances are they'll probably spoof us on their next show. Go at it. Freedom of speech. We don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Let's <laughs> people here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I look forward to their next comments. You know, we, let's see what else they say. The um, president of Clear Channel and the vice president, including Robin, the uh, producer and the program manager, met with us about a month ago. 
uh, regarding our campaign. And what they have done, and you should know this because it's very important how they are trying to divide us, is they have come up with a new Latino-focused program <laughs> on another radio station that they own at the same time. So they're very smart. They're very smart. So it wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden they have a Korean-specific uh, program you know, in the next couple of months or so. But that's not the answer. Because John and Ken continue to have the spear in their hands and they're poking at us. Every day they're poking at us until we bleed. And we already did that for 20 years. And we don't need that in Los Angeles. We need them out. We need them out. I think the fact that we're all coming together or doing exactly the opposite of what John and Ken are, are, are hoping that we do. They're trying to divide our communities and try to create rifts between immigrants, Latinos, Asian Americans, African Americans. The sheer fact that we're coming together, stand united to say that this cannot happen, especially in one of the most diverse cities in, in, in the country. Um, you know, I think that's very powerful. And you know, I think KFI and radio stations like this are paying attention. They they understand that you know, uh, sort of the gravity with which they're proceeding with this, and we hope you know, regardless of what the response will be, that the, the fact that the fact remains that we are working together, we are united, and we are presenting that that to them. Great, thank you. Anything else? All right, then I guess this concludes the press conference. Thank you.
네, 그렇습니다. 지금 이, 그, KFI, 그, AM 육사근, 캐닌자, 그, 턱쇼, 진행자들, 한인들 뿐만 아니라 지금 뭐, 한년 동안, 그런 뭐, 유태계인들, 아프리카, 아프리카, 그 다음에 이제 라틴계 이민자들을, 어, 대상으로 수없이도 많은 인종 차별을 또 비하하는, 그리고 아예 소수민족들을 아예 농담 삼아서, 또 작년 같은 경우는 우리 한인들이, 그, 강아지를 부겨 먹는다는 걸, 이렇게, 그, 계곡이를 먹는다는 걸 이렇게 농담 삼아 하는 식으로 사진들을 비하하는 그런 발언도 했었거든요. 그래서 이게 이제 한두 번의 문제가 아니라 이제 계속 그 진행되어 왔던 좀 흐름 깊이 문제라고 생각하고 이런 것들 좀 어, 단절하고 또 이런 그, 어, 인종차별을 좀 더, 좀 조성하는 그런 발언이 더 이상 진행되지 않고 그 라디오 한마디만 더 여쭤볼게요. 실제, 아, 그, 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 실제적으로 이런 인종발언 참여, 이런 그 발언이 나오면 한의사회 쪽으로 물러왔습니다. 출근 처음 하시는 분도 아닌데 카메라 보시면 어떡해요? 기자를 보시면 Could you be in charge of passing out the media packets to people? Wow. Well, I don't think I've had this since the shooting. How are you? Hi, how are you? Okay. Good to see you. I've never been in this office. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, this is Nakasek office. Very nice. Yeah. Do you want to start again? Yeah. 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 